everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another video. Today we're going to look at Enscape 2.8 for Vectorworks and focus on how Enscape integrates really well with Vectorworks to give you live link data from your designs and planning. As you can see, I'm just playing through a little preview of how Vectorworks and Enscape work together. And I'm already going to demonstrate this for you live on a project that I worked on recently um, for a retail warehouse and um, retail park. But as you can see, the really cool thing with Enscape is it's a real-time rendering software that totally uh, synchronizes your data as you're working in your program. And it really is very well integrated. And um, the new 2.8 features integrated libraries now. And this is the thing that I'm really quite excited to share with you. Um, we can also basically access one-click VR, export panoramas, as well as videos. And there really isn't a lot of training required for Enscape. Not sure about no training, but it's a very simple software to learn. So I'm really looking forward to sharing this with you. And as you can see, you can download the Enscape beta for free until October. So why wouldn't you give it a go? Now here we can see we're in Vectorworks. And you can see when you do install the plugins correctly, very easy to install. Um, essentially, you've got a kind of welcome screen there. So here's my Vectorworks model of the uh, retail park that I was talking about. This was a um, sort of little block model with a couple of uh, new retail outlet buildings and a car park, basically. Not, you know, too exciting, but um, a very sort of nice little kind of model to play with. So basically, what I'm going to do is go up to the launch Enscape button. It's a really simple uh, interface. You've basically got a workspace for Enscape and you just click Start Enscape. And here we are. You can already see my Vectorworks model has moved into Enscape. Now, I'm running full screen at the moment and you can see um, I'm just sort of sliding through the time of the day to shadows, get different shadows. One thing I really like about using Enscape is the side-by-side -side view. This is obviously great for recording, but if you do have two screens, you can actually put it on your other screen as well. And um, what makes a lot of difference is the fact when I move through my Vectorx model with my walkthrough tools, you can see it's directly synchronized live to the Enscape model and screen as well. So it really is like working in one application. Um, and any movements you do when you've synchronized will just immediately be reflected over on the Enscape screen as well. And this includes uh, doing things like turning layers and classes on and off, um, and really what I'm looking to do here is you can see my glass that I used in Vectorworks wasn't really designed to be that good looking. Um, it was kind of fairly tinted blue. So I'm just swapping that out for a clearer glass. And you can see within a, a second or so, immediately in Enscape essentially we've live updated the materials. So that's really cool. Now I'm just going to kind of take a look into the various sort of settings. Um, you can see that we do have RTX on um, one of the settings in there. And if you do have RTX graphics, then you may as well use, use to actually turn that setting on. Now this is the really exciting thing about Enscape 2.8, the new release for Vectorworks. Um, previously, you had to work with whatever kind of Vectorworks models and props you brought in. But now we have the Enscape library integrated into our Vectorworks beta. And this is absolutely fantastic. As you can see, I've clicked onto the library. Now you do need an internet connection for this, but it really does have a great set of uh, library objects. Um, so I'm just kind of dropping in a few plants, a few trees and that kind of thing. Now you may notice that in the Vectorworks side of things, the objects that you're dropping in, these trees and things, are pretty low polygon. They're quite sort of um, low mesh, if you like. Now, you will notice that if you're in orthogonal views, as I am at the moment on the Enscape screen, then the update doesn't actually occur straight away. Okay, so just wait for a moment and you see once I go into perspective, um, the change will actually come through. So I'm just going to drop in some cars. And again, the Enscape cars are pretty nice. Um, and you can see, still not seeing the changes just yet. But once I click to perspective view, Let's just change to perspective projection. As soon as I change to perspective view, those changes that I've added, those trees and those lovely cars, immediately update into the Enscape view. Um, and you can see how fluid it is. I'm able to kind of move and pan around using the WASDA keys. I can orbit and do the usual kind of moving around. Um, <clears throat> so now here I am back on my Vectorworks screen. Let's add a couple more cars. 
Um, the cars are um, really good quality, actually. They're sort of Evermotion models that have been um, integrated, some of these cars. And it really is quite rapid. As soon as I kind of drag and drop the car into my vector, it's model. Let's just do that one more time. Um, you'll see, let's go for, I think, go for that uh, Lancia, one of my favorite old kind of classic cars. Let's just drag that into the vector it's seen and wait a second or so and you'll see that that will basically update dynamically into the Enscape uh, version of the rendering. Got to go for the old Audi R8, absolute classic. Again, definitely one of my dream cars. So why not, you know, try and put one of those lovely, lovely Audi R8s in there. And you can see as soon as you kind of move around um, onto that Enscape screen, you'll see that will appear in a second. There it is already. So, not sure about the colour. <laughs> okay, so you're getting the idea. Um, essentially, any changes we make in the Vectorworks model using the Enscape libraries will immediately update on the Enscape renderer. But can you notice that in the Vectorworks model, they're quite sort of blocky, quite meshy. They're not high resolution at all. They're really, in fact, very low quality in some ways. And the idea of these is they're designed to be kind of speedy and not not slow your model down at all. Um, but what happens is when they are just essentially just proxies, so when they go across to Enscape, they just translate into much higher quality assets. Um, and the trees and the plants that Enscape give you with the integrated library are absolutely fantastic. So you can see even the grass has come across as a much higher quality material. You see those lovely trees with nice shadows and things as well. Now, one of the new features on Enscape 2.8 for other releases is um, the trees blow in the wind and that kind of thing. Um, it doesn't look like that's quite there with Vectorworks yet, um, but you can see as I scroll for the time of day, I sort of change these shadows, that kind of thing. Um, it does look really, really cool. I quite like views actually sometimes um, without the direct sunlight, but you can see those lovely reflections on the cars. Let's go okay, split screen again. We'll go back into Vectorworks and just kind of fix up a few more assets. Um, let's go and get some people. Um, so the people from the Enscape library are very, very nice. And you can see you've got a good library of people. They're in different static poses. Um, so if you've seen my twin motion videos, this is a little bit different. Um, they're not moving around, they're not kind of posable, or you can't change the, the clothing or anything like that. But they're pretty nice, they're pre-posed. So as long as you kind of get ones that look quite natural, um, I think you can get them looking really, really sort of good in the scene. So yeah, definitely a little bit of a different approach to say the twin motion assets. Um, but they're very high quality. Let's get a few more people in the scene. You can see as soon as I've kind of basically placed one over on the Enscape screen, it's already updated the rendering. So that's the beauty. Um, here we go. Let's just drag in a few more street props. Um, there's all sorts of things in the new Enscape library. Now, bearing in mind this is a free version for Vectorworks at the moment for PC only, sadly. A uh, real shame it's not available on the Mac, but um, I think with the Mac not supporting the RTX graphics cards and high-end graphics cards generally at the moment, that is a bit of a limitation that I think some of the real-time rendering software, which is understandable, you know, um, Lumion only runs on PC as well. Twinmotion, in fact, is the only cross-platform real-time rendering um, that I'm really aware of that's uh, experienced in this way. But you can see, as we kind of drag in those bricks or stones into the library, just place a few of those. Let's get a few more plants. Um, it's a pretty good library. You've got kind of all sorts of things, rocks and trees, plants, bushes, that sort of thing. Um, most, of the, most of the sort of real-time rendering software has similar kind of levels of libraries, I would say. Maybe a bit of debate about which is which is better or which is bigger, um, but I think it's all about the quality really. Um, personally, um, I really like the Twin Motion library, and I do really like the new Enscape integrated library. So I'm looking forward to seeing a bit more of that as it develops. Okay, so we're just going to go to capture. I'm just going to check that I'm on Ultra HD, um, so for sort of 4K kind of quality. You'll notice that it's really easy actually to change the background. Um, so if you go into the visual settings, we can easily swap to a number of different integrated backgrounds and you'll see that it's really kind of easy to just change these sliders, just sort of slide things like the shadow settings up and down and immediately over on the, the other side, see the results. I really, really do like things like the sky in Enscape. I think they've done a great job on the um, sky. 
and you can use your U key or your I key to scroll through the different times of the day. And actually, it's interesting, you can see the grass moving, so maybe I'm wrong, maybe maybe they have integrated the wind. I'm not sure it's there on the plants and the trees as yet, um, but that's definitely a new feature that I've seen working with SketchUp and the other, uh, the other plugins. So, okay, we're just gonna go through and do a bit of fine tuning on the images. Just really wanted to show you that you've got like levels of saturation here, things like color temperature, um, ambient lighting as well. So all the usual things. So whatever you do, make sure you kind of explore your visual settings um, before you kind of set up your views. So you can see I've just put a little bit of uh, kind of um, sort of vignetting on the image to make it look a bit nicer. And basically let's go through and basically see how we go in terms of setting up a quick animation. So what I've done, I've just shown the animation video editor. I'm gonna rewind a bit and basically record a keyframe. Um, use my WASDA keys to just simply move through and basically click add keyframe every time I want. And really it's as simple as that. With two or three keyframes, you can easily create a really nice smooth animation. Um, that was a fairly short one, but you can always lengthen it later. So we're going to go back in, do a little bit more work on um, the scene, just to make it a bit more lively. I think I'm just going to add a few more people around this retail space here, potentially a Greg's. Um, so what, what should we add? Um, I think we'll go through, just having a little look. Let's go for a sort of rubbish bin there. Um, just drag that in. Basically, it's one click to place and a second click to rotate, just like a normal vector with a symbol. And you'll see it's actually called an Enscape Asset Plugin Object. Um, so these are the new integrated library assets from Enscape for Vectorworks. And you can see, dragging in a few people, try and get this chap sat down if I can. Um, we'll kind of move him in a minute. So the good thing is you can kind of just place them quite rapidly. And then, you know, in Vectorworks, it's easy to sort of change the view and accurately position those, those assets where you need them. I think the key thing is just to kind of get them in to begin with. Um, and the good thing is, because these are actual native um, assets, um, you'll be able to sort of copy and paste them between scenes or duplicate them in Vectorworks. And that's a really, really powerful thing. So it's almost like just working with native, native Vectorworks symbols. But if you look at that motorbike, it's actually really simple, um, really simple geometry. So it doesn't slow down your Vectorworks file, but in Enscape, you can see the quality of it is absolutely stunning. Really, really good job. So this is cool. So we're just gonna keep working out the scene. I'll put some music on and just gonna let you relax while we uh, work up the scene ready for the next stage. Okay, so you can see that I've just been working in Vectorworks top plan view for a while in wireframe, but the beautiful thing with Enscape is it's over on the other screen, fully rendered. And here I am in wireframe in Vectorworks on one side of the screen, and I can kind of drive around in the Enscape view. And as soon as I kind of synchronize my views, I'll get exactly the same view. So basically, I'm just gonna go through and take a snapshot. And the good thing about that is um, I can actually kind of take a rendered snapshot and then apply um, some sort of effects like vignetting, change the time in Enscape, and when I'm happy, I can click OK, and that'll actually render out that snapshot um, to my desktop. You can see it only took literally a second or two. Um, so we're gonna go and find that a bit later on. So I'm gonna basically go back to my Vectorworks model and essentially manipulate this a little bit more. Let's go full screen into the Enscape view. Um, and I really just want to kind of have a little play around with this little navigation palette here just to show you that's a kind of another nice way to navigate there. And basically kind of like frame up this view just to kind of just tune it up, get the, get the lighting a little bit different. So when we render out the final images, you're going to find them under pictures on the C drive unless you've told it to go somewhere else. Um, so just taking a quick look at those and you can see the final quality of those is even nicer actually than the preview. The preview is actually extremely good 
um, very very close to the final output I find. So basically I'm just going to kind of go through and set this animation to render. So just have a final preview through, just see if we want to make any adjustments, I think that's fine. And let's go for it, let's kind of basically go back to Vectorworks and basically tell it to render out and I'm going to save that to my folder same folder just for ease of finding it you can see the rendering of the video does take a little bit longer um, but again it's pretty rapid and if I open up my NZXT cam you can see um, like all real-time rendering software Enscape is essentially GPU based not too bad on the RAM and really hardly touches the processor at all um, so having the best GPU is the key. Uh, you can see I've got an RTX 2080 Ti, so really, really brilliant graphics card. Um, and for this kind of work, I, you know, it's been amazing. This is a really great graphics card that I would recommend. It does cost half the cost of the PC, but it's well worth it. The great thing is I can carry on working in Vectorworks and keep actually kind of moving things around while Enscape is rendering in the background. It's quite happy to do that. And then I could set up some more views. So here's my final output video. You can see even nicer quality than the preview. Again, it's not the longest clip, but it was just really a quick example for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this Enscape 2.8 for Vectorworks tutorial, which is going to play out with the final images here. And you can see these are the final images and animations we produced on this very, very short tutorial. We've only been working for about 20, 20 minutes or so. And I'm really impressed by the quality. Um, I think with a bit more time, I could definitely create some really, really high-end images here. But it's really about the workflow and the speed. And that's what I love about Enscape. So do check it out, guys. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.